All right, 49ers fans, you did well. You did well. But you're still not top five. Grossy Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to episode of Packers, the podcast for you don't have to be a Packers fan. But it sure does help. I am your host, Tom freaking fracking flipping Grassi. And today what we are doing is recapping every single game of NFL Week 5. And we got some games to break down. I had some good games this week. And I got to say, looking ahead to Week 6 real quick, things are looking pretty sexy in there. We got some good matchups that I'm like, ooh, might have to check those out considering... I'm not streaming on Sunday because we got the Monday night game. Before we begin, though, I want to do a big shout and thank you to Mr. Mark Beach, who wrote this fantastic book called The People's Team. It is a 400-page, just like encyclopedia of everything Packers, and it is just phenomenal. And again, I showed this page yesterday, and look, I flipped to him again. It has that sexy beast in it. It's got essays, it's got amazing pictures, and I, I highly recommend this for any Packers fan. He was kind enough to send me an advanced copy. It is out in stores and everywhere you get your books. You know, those things that we used to buy and read uh, where, wherever books are sold. So check that out. Now let's jump into uh, week five. Now, start off with a Thursday night game in which the Packers and the Eagles kind of set the bar and were like, hey, the majority of these Thursday night games have sucked balls. And so the Rams and Seahawks are like, hold my coffee. Get it? Because they're... They're in Seattle, and that's where Starbucks did. They started there. They, they drink a lot of coffee. All right, so, yeah, the Rams falling prey to the Seahawks, 29-30 to off a missed Greg Zerline kick as time expired, letting the Seahawks win again, moving on to 4-1. and one. The Rams now dropping two in a row after losing in a shootout to the Buccaneers. And, you know, to break this down, Russell Wilson was absolutely incredible. Ab like, he has just been on fire this entire season. They were chanting MVP for him at the end, and, and he's making a case for it. Well, obviously, you have guys like Patrick Mahomes, but you also have guys like Russell Wilson, Christian McCaffrey, all guys who are playing incredible football right now. Uh, Russell Wilson is, is definitely up there. Um, but I, I think that... What's so interesting is we've talked about how competitive the NFC North is, and right at this moment, the NFC West is pretty damn competitive too. You have the undefeated San Francisco 49ers, though they will be playing the Rams next week, so we'll see how good they actually are. You have the Rams who, you know, while they have not looked great in any stretch of the imagination, Jared Goff hasn't looked great. Hell, Todd Gurley, even when he's utilized, hasn't looked amazing, uh, So, and the defense leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah, and then you have the Seahawks. So I think this is going to be a three-way race. Like I said, we'll see if the 49ers are for real and they're able to knock off the Rams uh, next week. But uh, the Rams should have probably won this game. Uh, but the Seahawks were able to, to sneak one away. And again, speaking from a Packers fan with lots and lots of experience, I have no interest in playing the Seahawks in January in Seattle. So if we could avoid that at all costs, that'd be great. Thanks. Moving on to the Jets versus the Eagles. The Eagles taking this one 31-6, and yeah, this is not surprising to anyone. If you got the Jets, the Dolphins, the Redskins, or the Bengals on your schedule, you're just like, oh, look, another bye week. And so the Eagles able to bounce back after beating the Packers. They so did some nice, uh, a nice boost for the morale here. The Eagles have definitely turned their season around after starting off not so great. Uh, and I think this is uh, it's a good win for them, and it's a good flex. Sam Darnold will be back for Jets fans next week. Uh, not that it's going to matter a whole lot because your team is uh, your team's struggling, but maybe Darnold can you know give mononucleosis to you know the other team, and maybe you have a shot then. Then moving on to the Panthers and the Jaguars. The Panthers edging out the Jaguars, 34 to 27. And here's another team that's kind of bounced back a bit after starting 0 and 2 with Cam Newton, and then Cam Newton go bye bye. See you later, buddy. Kyle Allen has come in and just completely uh, ran the team efficiently. Christian McCaffrey, I mentioned his name before, is definitely in the running for MVP. The guy is absolutely incredible. And so Panthers able to get it done. And considering that the Saints are, are playing top-notch football right now and the Falcons and Buccaneers, while they're no, like, the Falcons are, 
they should be doing so much better. And the Buccaneers, you know, they're 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 holding teams close. You know, this uh, the Panthers have a shot at potentially stealing a uh, a wild card spot, but obviously still early on in the season. Then moving on to the freaking fracking Vikings, winning 28 to 10 against the Giants again. No shocker here. As I was talking about last week in the Kirk Cousins video, what was going to happen, and I knew this was going to happen, the Vikings were going to blow out the Giants, and all the stuff about Stephon Diggs and Cousins and Thielen was all going to be swept under the rug for a week. And, and that's essentially what it seemed to happen. Adam Thielen was all smiles after going on a podcast saying that my quarterback can't throw any balls. Kirk Cousins apologized. And then Stephon Diggs was all pissed off. They were talking about potentially, well, there was rumors about potentially trading him, even though management was like, yeah, we're no, we're not going to trade him. But this was to be expected. They blew out a bad team, and now everyone's like, oh, my God, we're good again. And their October is, is pretty easy. So, you know, they, they, they'll, have, they'll probably have, like, a couple close games in there. But, uh, you know, I would not be surprised if the Vikings do very well in October just because they're really not playing great teams, and that's going to calm down the masses for a bit. But just wait until the Vikings actually play good football teams again, and, you know, then the rioting will start again. And I'll be waiting and smiling. Then moving on to the Falcons and Texans. <laughs> the Falcons, hey, listen, they put up 32 points. Like, that's something. That's something to hang your hat on. It was just that the Texans scored 53 points. Yeah, Deshaun Watson is, is just is just a monster uh, and, and completely tore up that Falcons defense. How bad has that Falcons defense been for so long? For so long, they've been so bad. And, and they, they, they draft people there, and it just doesn't seem to get better. Obviously, there's some injuries, but, you know, they, they just cannot get a break here. I mean, they, they won against the Eagles because of Julio Jones, but that team is way too talented. It has way too much talent on that team for them to be doing this bad. I honestly don't know what you do besides fire everybody at this point for the Falcons. Then moving on to the Saints and Buccaneers. The Saints pulling off a win 31-24. The, the score indicates uh, that it was a much closer game than actuality. There was, uh, there was two interceptions that got called back. So that would have, uh, but from Jameis Winston. So that, that could have changed the tide of the game. But Bridgewater had his best game. And, you know, the defense held uh, Jameis Winston in check. And so this is one of those things, again, that the Saints have just so much depth on that roster that even without Drew Brees, they could be successful. I said since the beginning, all they had to do was split games that Drew Brees was out, and Teddy Bridgewater is doing more than that, uh, winning every single game that he started. The only game losing was against this, the Rams, but he didn't even start that game. So the Saints kept rolling this week. Then moving on to the Bills versus the Titans. The Bills recovering after their only loss against the Patriots last week, defeating the Titans 14-7. to Now, the Bills, again, are one of those teams that they have a good defense. They absolutely do. Their offense does leave a lot to be desired, but they're, they're, they're putting their opponents away. They haven't faced real quality opponents except, like, the Patriots, but, you know, they're able to hold the Titans off. And listen, the Titans are just, like, ebb and flowed all season thus far. I can't even get a read on the Titans defense. I can't get a read on the Titans offense because they're just so all over the place. But the Bills were able to come into uh, Tennessee and, and, and knock them off for a win. So, you know, kudos to the Bills. They remain the second best team in the AFC East, which doesn't really say much. Then moving on to the Cardinals and Bengals. The Cardinals won a game. Yay! With a field goal, beating the Bengals 26 to 23. And the Bengals, they just can't catch a break. Like I said before, you play the Bengals, you play the Dolphins, the Redskins, the Jets, you're in good shape. And the Cardinals, this was just a, a battle of suck, and the Cardinals sucked just a little bit less. And that is my expert analysis. Moving on to the Patriots and... No, am I talking about the Patriots and Redskins? No. They won 33-7. No one expected anything differently. The Redskins were never going to win this game. They finally fired their head coach, but he's not the problem. you got to get rid of Dan Snyder, but he's going to be there until the sun burns out. So, yeah, no changes there. Redskins, you suck. Your field sucks. Everything sucks. Yep. Then moving on to the Ravens and Steelers. A close game going into OT. Mason Rudolph getting knocked out cold. Uh, which was terrifying, out with a concussion. Um, but the Ravens were able to get it done in a close divisional game. Again, these divisional games are always tough to tell. After being blown out by the Browns last week, 
I, I feel like a lot of opinions have changed on the Ravens, who came out the first two weeks, and you're like, oh, wow, they're incredible. And they were able to do enough to win uh, today. But, you know, losing against the Chiefs, who are a good football team, and nearly losing to the Steelers, you know, that defense is a lot more suspect than I think people originally uh, anticipated. But they were able to pull off the win against a divisional rival, and, you know, we'll see if they can carry that momentum with them the rest of October. Then moving on to the London game in which the Bears lost. Oh, I love it. The Raiders beat the Bears. Oh, I love it. I love it. And I saw everyone was like, oh, man, this, this is revenge for the Khalil Mack trade. No, Raiders, you, you, didn't, get, you didn't get the better deal there. I'm sorry. You, you, you didn't. You traded away a once-in-a-generational player. There's no way that you come out on top. But in London, they did come out on top. Raiders came out firing on all cylinders for the first half of football. Then they sucked and tried to give away the game. But the Bears couldn't play catch up. So it makes sense, right? The defense, you know, can, can keep them in close games and usually win out games for them. The offense has to do just enough. But if they find themselves behind, Chase Daniel or Mitch Trubisky are not going to do anything to inspire me to lead an offensive surge. And that's exactly what happened here. So the Bears uh, fall flat on their face across the pond and, I mean, I'll take it. Absolutely. Then moving on to the Broncos and Chargers. And the Broncos picked up their first win of the season. God, the Chargers, man, without Derwin James, that defense is just not the same. And that team is like another one that has so much talent. They got Gordon back, who was splitting carries with Eckler. And it just, it didn't make a difference. The team really was just not able to move the ball really well against, again, a Broncos team that I think was much better than their record indicated. But... You know, Cortland Sutton had an amazing game as well. Philip Lindsay continued to have a good game. And the Chargers are just in free fall right now. If you were to tell me that the Chargers are going to be, you know, one of the, 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 the slowest starting teams uh, this year, I would not have believed you considering how great they were doing last year. Then moving on to America's Game of the Week. That's right, the Green Bay Packers walked into Dallas and showed everyone why they're really America's team. Knocking off the Cowboys 34-24. In the third quarter, it was 31-3, to and the Angels were singing in the sky. Dak Prescott, uh, during the game, threw three interceptions and almost 500 yards, but we don't talk about that. Ezekiel Elliott held to under 75 yards rushing. Yes, thank you very much. It's answered a lot of questions about the run defense. This allowed them to bounce back after the Philadelphia game, and they almost came back at the very end, but Aaron Jones, without Devontae Adams, by the way, without Jamal Williams, was able to come up big and uh, have four touchdowns on the day. And so this is a great win for the Packers as they head into Monday night to play the Lions, who have swept us the past two years. So this will be fun, but at least they're back at home. Then moving on to the Sunday night game. I said last week that the Colts are probably going to give the Chiefs problems, but I didn't think the Colts would be able to win. But they did it. They did it. The Chiefs, without their starting left tackle, left guard, and top two wide receivers in Sammy Watkins and Tyreek Hill, lost 19-13. to The Colts showing up with a great defense, a great plan of attack just to keep Patrick Mahomes off the field with a great running game, and they did just that. There was some questionable play calling by the Chiefs, but you know they were unable to come back. They ran out of time, and listen, this is the, the – someone mentioned this in the comments, I think, yesterday, that the Lions kind of – Gave the blueprint to here. Here's how you beat Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Just make sure he never sees the field. And the Colts were able to execute that perfectly. Then on to the Monday night game. Nick Bosa planted his flag and just destroyed that Cleveland Browns offense. Who was firing on all cylinders last week and destroyed the, the Ravens. But now they're, they're, they're terrible. So yeah, th this is such a hot and cold team. I, I really don't know how to get a read on the Browns either. So they are obviously starting with a losing record at 2-3. and three. The 49ers still undefeated. And like I said, their biggest test is going to be next week against the Rams. If they can hold their own against the struggling Rams, you know, this team might be definitely for real. So we shall see. But let me know what was your favorite game of week five in the NFL. What were the shockers? Let me know what you think. You can always find me at TomGrassyComedy.com or at TomGrassyComedy. All social media is seen down below. Check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and, of course, the YouTube. And check out Patreon.com slash TomGrassyComedy to support me, you beautiful people. But thank you so much for watching. Tomorrow we'll have Week 6 predictions. We'll have the Week 6 duds and duds for fantasy. So tune in right here. I'm Tom Grassi. And as always, Go Pack Go! Go Pack Go!